Hey everybody, welcome back to Sophisti Cakes by Mary. For this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I made this bright, cheery fault line cake that featured some gelatin spheres. I feel like this cake looks complicated, but is actually fairly simple to do. So if this sounds interesting to you, stick around and we'll get right to it. To make our spheres, we're gonna use some Knox gelatin, some balloons, some color dust, a few bowls, skewers, and toothpicks, and a foam cake dummy to put the skewers in. First, we need to bloom our gelatin, which means sprinkling the gelatin on top of some cold water. Now, I will link the uh, recipe below. And once we have that just kind of mixed together, set it aside for about five minutes so that it can bloom. And in the meantime, I went ahead and I blew up these um, these balloons, these are the smaller balloons with a tire, um, like a bike tire inflator. I found that you cannot do that with just your mouth. I almost passed out. <laughs> and once our um, gelatin has bloomed, you're gonna heat it up in 10 to 20 second intervals until it is, you can see through those bubbles to where it is clear. Now I'm just kind of skimming the top, trying to remove some extra of a, it's kind of a scum coating. I'm removing that. And then I'm just using my color dust. These are petal dust to add the color to the gelatin. You could use color gels. Um, you can use powder color, that's fine. I just wanted to have some of the shimmer. And I did add some pearl shimmer also. And for this one, I added some orange to the pink because I wanted it to be more of a coral. Now it shows up very bright in the camera and in the pictures, but it was actually more of a coral in real life. And we're just gonna roll our, our um, balloons into the gelatin and then tap off the extra as much as you can. Sometimes you'll get some drips and that's okay. It's just, it's really hard to get these perfect. And I had attached the balloons to the skewers with just some regular tape and that way um, you have that to hold on to and you can stick it in your foam cake dummy to dry. And you don't have to worry about messing with the finish on them. And then I did the same thing with some green petal dust with a little bit of the pearl added to it. And that's, I'm just showing how you can set it up on your foam. I did about hmm, five to six different balloons for each color because it's guaranteed they're not always gonna work. So you're gonna have some that are not gonna work out. So you're gonna have some waste. So just make more than you think you're gonna need. And for this blue, I added the blue, blue um, petal dust and some more of that um, pearl. And make sure that you're mixing the color in as much as you, as you can. On this blue one, I did have some a little pocket of petal dust that I, I neglected to mix in and I didn't know it. And it just kind of makes it not look perfect. So there is the first coat. Now once that has dried, or you even five, once you get your first coat done, you can go back to the first one and do your second one. I would, guarantee, I would suggest doing two coats of the gelatin. And for the white ones, I wanted to add some texture. I hadn't seen this done. This was an experiment and it actually worked very well. I added some white food coloring to the gel or the um, gelatin. And then I just dipped it in these little tiny sugar pearls. And it stuck, they stuck really well. So happy surprise. And now, okay, confessional. The camera was not pointed at what I was doing when I removed the balloons. Every video, I swear to goodness, there's something that I have to say, well, I didn't get this on camera. Well, for this one, I didn't get the removal of the balloons. All you can see here is that I cut into the balloon after they had set up overnight and cut a circle around where that balloon ties. And then you just kind of use a um, toothpick or a little tool and kind of mix, pull the balloon away from the setup gelatin little bit at a time and eventually it will come out and there I just showed you the colors that I tried to match the colors of the gelatin balls with my food colorings my junk food colorings and I think I got pretty close 
And here I am just putting on the white base color on top of my pre-crumb coated cake. I just used a chocolate ganache to do the crumb coat and then set it up in the refrigerator for 20 minutes and then went back in with my white buttercream. Now sometimes I do show you the filling and crumb coating and sometimes I don't. I just feel like um, sometimes I have more footage to show you and I have plenty of videos where I show you how I fill, fill and um, crumb coat the cakes that if you want to you can go back and you will there's plenty of different examples of that on my past videos. Now I'm just using water in that spray bottle to help me smooth out the buttercream. I did get this one buttercreamed in one go, especially since I knew I was going to um, be doing the fault line. I didn't have to worry about the bottom sections being exactly perfect because you're going to go over it with, it with the other buttercream, buttercream anyways. And then I cleaned off the board, set it in the refrigerator for 20 minutes. And now what I'm doing is I know I had four different colors of buttercream. So I am marking in kind of a guideline on where I want these different colors to stop and start. I didn't want to press in too hard because I knew I was going to do this irregular line because I was doing the fault line idea. So just kind of do a, a light impression. And then I didn't bother to take the buttercream all the way to the bottom for each different layer because I didn't want it to be real thick around the bottom. So I just did a line for each one and then smoothed them out separately. Now make sure that you're doing an irregular line unless the look you're going for is horizontal stripes that are perfect then you just hold your hand still while you turn the turntable. But I wanted these to be irregular so I'm just kind of waving my hand up and down, moving it up and down as I'm turning the turntable and then go back in and fill in the gaps. And remember too when you are piping where the top of your fault line is that when you smooth it it's going to spread up. Make sure that you are not putting it too close to the other color because you don't want to cover up your previous color with your new color. Does that make sense? When you smooth it out, when you it, it, it flattens it out and it spreads. And for an extra little touch, I wanted to add some gold, I'm sorry, not gold, some pearl dragees, a couple different sizes, just kind of randomly around. And I'm just using my fingers Sometimes the pliers work, sometimes they don't. This day, they were I was just shooting them all over the house <laughs> when I was trying to use the pliers. So I mostly just use, uh, not pliers, tweezers. I mostly just use my fingers because they were bigger, big enough that I could pick them up. Just make sure that your hands are clean and dry. Now I wanted to emphasize the edges of my different colors and I decided this time to go with silver luster dust mixed with Everclear and a finer paintbrush and I'm just painting along that top edge. You don't have to do that. This was something I kind of decided last minute to do. I hadn't fully decided to do that until I was looking at it and thought it needs something and for me that something typically is a metallic finish of some kind. And I always do gold so once in a while I want to throw in some silver. And I will link the luster dust that I prefer in the description below also. And I did not level out this top because I wanted the top to mimic the fault line. Now I'm just lining up my uh, gelatin balls, figure out and kind of get a, a rough idea of where I want them to be. And then once I kind of have an idea of a plan, I go ahead and I'm just attaching them with some um, piping gel. Piping gel works really well to get the gelatin to stick to the buttercream. And since you have that opening where you pulled that balloon out, that's a good flatter spot to get it to stick to the cake. Now the trick is to get camouflage that circular spot on the ones that are piled up. 
you just kind of have to play with it until you get it in a spot where you think, okay, that looks good to me. And there you have it, guys. My gelatin balls, or spheres, if you want to call them spheres, and my bright fault line cake. So I hope you like it and I hope you decide to give it a go yourself and use whatever colors you want. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video and if you'd like to watch some other videos go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here and if you would like to check out my other social media I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name Sophisticates by Mary and please take the time to share like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.